this is like one part that art museum scene in Ferris Bueller and then the other part is like not at the museum on steroids. <laughs> What is up Netflix fans and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about the brand new Netflix movie Velvet Buzzsaw. That's my buzzsaw noise. As always on this channel, I like to talk about the film, tell you guys how I feel, and I want you to get down in the comments section below. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Are you looking forward to it? If you haven't watched it yet, it's on Netflix free to everyone I guess who pays for Netflix, so that's not free. And stay tuned because later today I will have a review of the brand new Netflix series Russian Doll, but first, Velvet Buzzsaw. <laughs> so after a series of paintings by an unknown artist are discovered, a supernatural force enacts revenge on those who have allowed their greed to get in the way of art. And like I said, this movie holds two very different halves. The first half is this satirical look at this world, the world of art, a world that we don't really know as much about as maybe the people involved. So for me, that's kind of why I prefer the second half because the second half of this movie is this zany, insane, like I said, night at the museum style thing, except it's not for kids. It is very much for adults, and that is when the movie truly got interesting for me. It was a tad bit clunky when it comes to the editing and the pacing. And if you guys don't know who Dan Gilroy is, Dan Gilroy is the guy who brought us Nightcrawler, one of my favorite films from that year, one of my favorite performances from Jake Gyllenhaal ever. He is back, teaming back up with this director in this movie, and once again, Jake Gyllenhaal, before I get into anything else, he is magnificent, but not only he, it is the entire cast. They play their part, and they play it great. David did Diggs is in here from Blind Spot. Well, he's not just from Blind Spotting, but from Blind Spotting last year. He is so good. Rene Russo, she always kills. Even Tony Collette is in this film. And Tony Collette never gives a bad performance. And one character that cracks me up, I can't tell you why she cracks me up because she continues to stumble upon things, that's all I'll say, but she is played by Natalia Dyer from Stranger Things. She is very good, but every time she stumbled upon something, I won't say what it was, I was just cracking up because it's like, this is the most unlucky girl. <laughs> and here's what I'll say about Velvet Buzzsaw. I hate to compare it to Nightcrawler because I love that movie so much and I hold it to high standards, but it is another Dan Gilroy film, so I will tell you guys that Velvet Buzzsaw, in my opinion, is not near as well crafted or just as good as that movie. What this film does do is it gives you a peek into this world, how people within this situation act, how they respond to each other, the relationships that come up, and it plays on it in a very satirical way, like I said. So it expects you to sit back and go, I just, I don't know about these guys. They seem dishonest, they seem unsure to themselves, so how are they this sure about art, this sure about what their career path is? And I thought that was very interesting, although the first half for me did drag a bit more than I anticipated. There were things that I like, especially when you look at the conversations between the characters, but those actors and actresses are so talented. Was it the material or was it just the sheer amount of talent on screen that was piquing my interest? And throughout the entire first half, I was wondering, am I invested with these characters? I don't know if I was fully, but I was kind of on board with where they were going. Because I knew just from the trailers and the marketing that the final third, or at least the second half of the film, was going to be a different style movie. It was going to turn into something else, and it absolutely did. That's when the movie gets a little crazy, a little over the top, but at least it was super entertaining, and you were trying to figure out the mystery within. Now, are there questions that you have even when the credits come, when the movie's over? Yes, absolutely. I still have questions about certain elements of the plot, but... It is much more entertaining the first half, but also something that I think a lot of people are going to look at and say this film went completely off the rails and that did not work for me. I'm not saying it completely worked for me, but it at least piqued my interest enough that I was engrossed, entertained, definitely entertained when it comes to some of the death scenes because you know they're coming, you saw them in the trailer. Those are very uh, creepy but fun. Looking at the film from a technical standpoint, there were some great uses of color correction. One scene in particular where they're driving the sky in the background. I'm like, I wish more of the film looked like this. The use of color, especially towards the end when things start happening with the paintings, I really like that. But it wasn't as well crafted as I anticipated it to be, especially from a director like this. I wanted the movie to maybe be shot better, look a bit better than it actually did. Not that it looked bad, it's just nothing in there really got me going, ah, oh, that's filmmaking, that's the director of Nightcrawler that I know. I never, I never found that like I wanted to. I wanted this movie to be a lot tighter from a technical standpoint. 
And I'll say this, the film is funny at times when you're looking at the satirical elements, thinking about how some people act in real life compared to what they're portraying on screen. I'm like, okay, that is fun, that is creative, I like what they're doing here. Now at the end when they throw in those horror elements, those are funny in their own way, but I found them to be super created and well crafted. Those are my favorite parts of the film. Now if you start to think about it too hard, some of the stuff it's like, okay, what exactly is going on? Not that I need all of the answers, but some things just didn't work as well. The movie's a bit messy, I'll just say that. It's a bit messy, it's a bit inconsistent for me, but it's entertaining at times. And that's something I can say about watching it on Netflix. If you're turning on Netflix, you just want to be entertained. You may have to wait a bit to be super entertained, but it does come later on in Velvet Buzzsaw even if you're just sitting there like, okay. Now, if you saw the trailers, the marketing, I think the trailers for this movie pitched it to be a bit different than what it actually was, and that is something that is more towards the horror genre. This movie didn't quite get there. It does get a bit horrifying at times. There are one or two jump scares. I found them to be a bit cheaper than I wanted them to be, but it never full-on goes into the horror genre. It never hits those marks that I think a lot of people are going to expect this movie to hit. Now, it's up to the viewer. It's up to you guys. Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Did I want a horror movie personally? I thought it was going to go that direction, but I was willing to keep my mind open for where this story was going to take me. And while it didn't work all the way, it did take it in an interesting yet slightly insane direction. <laughs> So at the end of the day, Velvet Buzzsaw is a satirical look on the high-powered art world mixed with a semi-cheap slasher film. <laughs> I look at it from the perspective of this movie did do some things right, the acting is great, some of the conversations, the dialogue is really good, and even though it slightly falls apart later on in the film, I was still entertained. For some, the first half is going to be not enough, the second half is going to be too much, and I completely understand that. For me, I enjoyed parts of Velvet Buzzsaw, although I will say, as such a big fan of Nightcrawler, I was a bit underwhelmed with the film, but I still had a pretty good time with it, and that is why I'm going to give Velvet Buzzsaw a 63%, a fresh score, nothing I'm going to write home to mom about, but it is a movie that I would say, you know what, give it a shot, watch it. If it's not for you, I understand. If it is for you, I understand that as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Leave your comments down below. I love talking about movies and TV shows. Later on today, a review of the brand new Netflix series, Russian Doll. Tomorrow, How to Train Your Dragon 3. I am so excited to do that, to talk about that. But before that, earlier in the day, I'm doing a doing a special Q&A. Not going to say what it's for, but if y'all want to leave some questions down below for the Q&A, you can do that. I'm not going to tell you guys what we're celebrating, but it's something important. It's something special. It's something that I cannot wait to talk about. I'm looking forward to it. I will attempt to do a live stream. Can't guarantee it's going to happen because my internet at this apartment complex is not very good, but I will try my absolute best. You guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll catch you uh, later on today.